Well, I found an, another amazing world. You know, they're, they're everywhere in this place. But this one's a little bit fitting. If you can notice the background music, it's from Ori. Ori and the, I believe, Will and the Wisps, the second, the second game. The developer came out, talked about how AAA games are failing, how they're spending too much money, how things just don't work very well for the current industry as a standard. These are things that, you know, Ori and the Blind Force, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, two of the greatest games I believe have come out in the last decade. If you haven't played them, they're well worth it. But this comes, you know, I'm talking about this on the heels of, of a studio. Uh, we've got Firewalk Studio and, and another one that Sony has now closed because they spent $400 million on a debacle of a game called Concord. That game, Concord, it was like any other game you got out there. You got another shooter, another hero-style shooter that just doesn't bring anything to the table. And they pushed more of a political agenda in it. And because of that, it became something people didn't want to play. It, it was the, the perceived notion that this is what we're going to tell you to play. And, like with the, the Ori dev, he said otherwise. He, he, he's saying otherwise in, in the AAA space. These indie devs know what they're doing. And very much the same to what I see in front of me now. People know how to experience the, their own take on life. Their own uniqueness. And that's where I've been. I've been exploring a, a whole new world at the same time. And a lot of people don't. You know, there's people out there that just don't understand it. I understand it. It's a much different world. But Thomas Mayer of Ori and the Blind Force, Ori of Moon Studios. It is absolutely not surprising to me that a lot of AAA studios have been struggling lately, and my prediction is that they won't really get better anytime soon. I believe that's right. A lot of this has come out of the, uh, the days of COVID, uh, so it's made things a lot more different in the gaming space. I know it sounds absurd, but most of the game studios out there that hit it, it big were at one point just a small group of passionate folks that wanted to make games together. In a lot of cases, they were just friends. And if they were lucky, they found out that the process that they actually make is a great team together. You know, and I'm seeing this in my own sort of scenario right now. I'm seeing a lot. Of stuff like this myself there's a, you know, a great bunch of folks that i have met and i i don't know what i would do without them at this point there are games they've created stuck a chord and now they're on the scale up and becoming a massive studio and then there's lots of folks come in and demand this and that and unknowingly change the culture and the approach and then suddenly wonder what happened to this and that great studio that always delivered in the past once they were not delivering the same quality products even though everything changed in their approach to making games that's been a big deal about it that's been an absolute big deal about it the change the approach these companies have taken everyone fell in love with something of these games there's a reason why people fell in love with games the old school Super Nintendo games that I, I, I absolutely still enjoy and hold them dear to where I am in life. And now, I you know, I've been on a journey that's been something more. Meeting great friends. Meeting a lot of people that just love the things that they like. And that's why things are so much different. But, but they're not different at the same level. I've compared companies to bands in the past because I think that analogy helps a lot of people understand that they're really digging into the same issues here. Take the Beatles. They become successful. Now their record company tells John, Paul, Ringo, and George that they should write their own songs. And by the way, now they should also hire Lisa, Stewart, Shane, and Mary and have them be a part of the songwriting team so they can produce more stuff and of course these new folks should have a the same say because otherwise we might have just face diversity issues 
Does anybody really think we would have gotten the same output they had by doing it that way? No, of course not. And it's not no different for game studios or any other group of talented people that produce art together. And that's been a lot of what I've seen. I see a lot of friends. They're producing their own things. They're doing their own greatness. They're making something that's theirs. They don't have a corporation coming down on top of them, telling them, you can't do this. You can't be something more. I'm living life to the fullest at this point. And I am very thankful for the friends that I've made along the way. You have to keep that magic alive. And that's been the biggest part. The biggest part in all of this. The magic is here. I... No one understands it. No one truly understands it until you walk into and go through the looking glass and see something more. You have to keep that magic alive and make it all work in the first place. We're dealing with humans here, and all too often the industry seems to forget that. You know, the industry, these corporations, they have shareholders. Those shareholders want money. If they, they're not making money, then the shareholders get upset, they run away and do stuff. Look at what happened to Ubisoft. Their shares tanked because of stuff that's going on with Assassin's Creed and a lot of other things. You know, I've talked a lot about this stuff on the channel. And it's only recently that I've taken my own blinders off to look in the mirror and to see something more, something greater. And the people that are out there that are trying to make something for themselves, they're the ones that are actually doing something more in life. They're the ones that are actually doing these things. These indie developers that put out a video game. Look at Scott Cawthorn of Five Nights at Freddy's. He put out Five Nights at Freddy's. When he, when he put out that first game, of the many series, it was a last ditch effort. He was like, I'm done. And that's kind of where I went. It's kind of where I was. I'm following that similar path at this point. I was almost done. I was almost done with this entirely. I said, forget it. I'm, I, I, I don't want anything more. I don't want to be more than just a talking head on the internet. Now, now I dove into something that is far greater than I ever thought. It's larger than life. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. If you liked this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Have yourselves a great day. I am your proud Canadian Phoenix Cinder Shadow. I'm signing off here. I will see you again very soon. Hi. Ace. Ace. Sit. Sit. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy.